Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369 0703 768 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. service delivery. Dr. Peter Labi is a consultant physician neurologist who has worked at Jute 1995 to 97. He moved, he went to Bayero University Hospital and worked there from 1997 to 2004. By 2004, he moved down to uh, University of Abuja Teaching Hospital. And he became the CMD of the Teaching Hospital from 2008 to 2016. Abuja Teaching Hospital. Abuja. Abuja University, my Abuja University Teaching Hospital, CMD. No, it was formerly specialist, well, well, that specialist hospital before it changed to teaching hospital. He's a consultant to World Health Organizations on adult antiretroviral therapy. And he's a member of several professional bodies, including AAN, NFN, and he is born again a Christian, a born again Christian, serving as national director of Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship. Dr. Peter Labi, you are welcome to present your topic, health service delivery. God bless you. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to be part of this meeting. And I want to appreciate God for that uh, this privilege. By the grace of God, I happen to have attended two or three of these meetings at, in Boko, uh, but I've not been able to be part of it for about two, three years now. Uh, today, I'm going to talk for about 30 minutes on health service delivery. Uh, with particular reference to us as healthcare workers and what we are expected to do to make sure that we deliver effective healthcare services. I will, first of all, just go into a little uh, bit of what health service delivery is and then uh, look at how we can combine Christian values in our healthcare uh, career, and then also how we can follow Christ's call to provide uh, healthcare. Healthcare delivery can be defined as multiple services that are rendered to individuals, to families or communities by agents of the health service for the purpose of promoting, maintaining, monitoring or restoring health. And the World Health Organization defines service delivery 
as the way inputs are combined to allow the delivery of series of interventions or health actions. The year 2000 health report states that service provision or delivery is a shift function the health system needs to perform. So the shift function we need to, to perform as healthcare workers is the provision of quality healthcare. And uh, health service delivery, you know, can be represented in a systems perspective. It can be represented in a, a systems perspective with inputs, processes, outputs, and outcome. These are the various system perspectives that we can, you know, uh, look at healthcare delivery with inputs, processes, outputs, and outcome. And then we'll look at some of the core inputs that are very necessary for healthcare delivery. And there are quite many, starting from financial resources, competent and compassionate healthcare uh, staff, adequate physical facilities and uh, equipment. When we are talking of inputs also, we talk of essential medicines and supplies, various current clinical guidelines and operational policies. All these are various inputs that can help us to provide quality healthcare. And when we talk of inputs, we are talking of health financing, human resources, materials and equipment, the pharmaceuticals, uh, physical facilities, information systems, and the various inputs that can help us to provide quality health service. Now, if we have the inputs, they have to be processes. And the processes include management of the health service itself, like case management, which could be curative, preventive, or health promotion. We could also have palliative care, rehabilitative, and of course, what most of us are aware of, acute, and chronic care. But well, we do know that healthcare delivery is beyond acute and chronic care. Then as part of the processes, we are talking of organization of the care itself, the referral system, the counter referral system, and of course the quality assurance processes that are responsible for us to maintain, I mean, for us to deliver quality healthcare, supervision, quality improvements, and then accreditation. At various levels of healthcare, accreditations are necessary. And it's all to enable us deliver quality healthcare. And it's all to help us to be able to evaluate what we have, to look inwards and to be able to see how the resources at our disposal can be utilized to provide quality healthcare. So when all these are done, then we, cannot, we can now talk of the outcomes. And in terms of outcomes, we can have in, inputs and impact. The inputs could be vaccination, you know, to make people health, I mean, healthy, uh, health, to promote healthy, uh, uh, healthier behavior, increase continuity of services, and then to be able to have providers that adhere to clinical standards of care. And of course, the sum total of all these processes is the impact. 
the impact could be decreased morbidity and then decreased mortality. So a good health service delivery should have the following characteristics. For us to say that we have a good healthcare delivery system or service, or we are providing you know, a good health service, the following characteristics are quite necessary. They are not exhaustive, but they are the ones that we are going to list are quite important. Comprehensiveness. A comprehensive range of health services is what should be aimed at that will be appropriate to the needs of the target population. And this comprehensiveness should include preventive, curative, rehabilitative, and health promotion activities. The other characteristic that, you know, of a good health service delivery is accessibility. Access, if there is no access, then of course it's of no use. So we are looking for services that are directly accessible with no undue barriers. And there are so many barriers to access, cost, language, culture, and so many other forms of uh, barriers to access. And then, of course, closely related to that is coverage. Coverage. The sick and the healthy both need healthcare service delivery. All income groups all social uh, groups need healthcare service delivery. And then of course there must be continuity. Healthcare is not about just a one point thing. There must be continuity of care across the network of services. Health conditions, levels of care and over the life cycle of a disease. Very importantly, quality of care is also another very important characteristic of a good healthcare service delivery. And when we are talking of quality, we are saying that the healthcare service must be effective, it must be safe, it must be centered on the patient's needs and given in a timely fashion. So this patient uh, passing centeredness is very, very important. That services are organized around the person, not the disease. Services are organized around human beings, not the disease. And that is why when you have a patient in front of you, either at the clinic, at the pharmacy, at the physiotherapy, at the laboratory, you are looking at a human being, not a disease. And so our services should be organized around persons, not disease. Users perceive health services to be responsive and acceptable to them. These are human beings that have feelings. It is not, the emphasis should not be the, the disease. There should be participation from the beneficiary. People are partners in their own health care. The more a patient know about his or her disease, the more you get, the, the better result you get. They should be partners. They should participate in their own care. And then of course, for health care delivery to be, I mean, to be uh, uh, qualified to be good, there has to be accountability and efficiency. Health services should be well managed, 
so as to ad adhere to core elements with minimum wastage of resources. And whoever held resources are, I mean, entrusted into, there should be accountability for overall performance and results. So thus far, we've been looking at, you know, what healthcare service delivery is and the scope. For us as health workers, the truth of the matter is that, yes, you have been trained to care, you have been trained in your various uh, disciplines. To the ordinary mind, I have been trained to earn a living. But why we are here today is because we know that our training is beyond earning a living. There is a mandate which is much more than earning a living. And so how do we combine Christian values with healthcare career? You know, the healthcare uh, service personnel, there's a very wide range. Start, I mean, starting from even the security man that is the, at the gate to the doctor that is in the surgery, or in the theater, in the clinic, to the nurses in the wards, to the pharmacist, to the laboratory uh, scientists, physiotherapists. So Christian values, we know, have long played a very instrumental role in healthcare delivery. The early missionaries that came to us utilized these Christian values and they were able to affect and influence. These values were exploited by the early missionaries that came to Nigeria to preach Christ and the, the Christ message of love and compassion aligns perfectly with healthcare fields uh, that we are all called into. Our Christian faith is supposed to influence all aspects of our life. And so it makes sense that our Christian values would influence our care in the healthcare delivery. Is it, it is important to know that we all cannot be on the pulpit, but the corner that you are placed in the service delivery, that gate that God has placed you is your, is your platform to preach Christ. It's your platform to exam exemplify the life of Christ and the injunctions that have been given to us. You see, our Lord summed up the Bible in two commandments, love for our gods and love for others, that is our neighbors. And Christian, Healthcare service workers are in the greatest, you know, with the greatest, have the greatest advantage in doing this. So, by evaluating healthcare through a biblical lens, which is what we are doing, we find that Christians are called to pursue equitable healthcare for everyone even if it requires personal sacrifice. And most of the time it requires that personal sacrifice because they know that everything they have is a gracious gift from God. There is nothing that you have, the knowledge that you have as a doctor, the training, you know, as a nurse, as a physiotherapist, as a pharmacist, there is every tendency for us 
you know, to be tempted to say, do it because I got high grades in this, whether in Jab or in Waek. There are many more people out there who uh, had probably had higher grades, but were not privileged to be where you are. And not privileged to be in a position where people can submit and surrender themselves to them. People submit to you, they surrender themselves to you at this very critical time of their needs. Christians are called to pursue the welfare of others by seeking social justice and caring and caring for the sick. We see that in Jeremiah 29, 7 and uh, Micah 6, 8 and Matthew 25, 36. Christ said, whatever you do for the least of my brothers, that you do unto me. Christians are called to remember that everything they have is a gracious gift from God. That we can see very clearly from Romans 11.36 and Proverbs 6.9. So these doctrines, you know, is what we call common grace, a concept that everything good in life is an end gift from God including your training, including your knowledge, including the service that you are called to provide is an unearned gift from God. And so if it is on end, if it is not through your effort, but it is through the special grace of God that he has endowed with, that he has endowed you with this, then you have a responsibility to give it freely because freely you are giving, freely you should, uh, uh, you, should, you should be able to give. So how can we follow Christ's call to provide care? How can we follow Christ's call to provide care? In all professions, it is possible to display uh, to demonstrate God's love. But healthcare providers have a better advantage. Our career puts us in a better position to be able to care for people and to be able to influence people by providing physical, emotional, spiritual care. So healthcare workers are called to live out their faith on a daily basis. As a healthcare worker, you are called out at every minute of the day, whether during your work schedule or out of your work schedule. That is what sacrifice is all about. Every health care worker holds great potential to serve Christ because people are vulnerable. People are more vulnerable when they are sick. And vulnerable people are more amenable to receive Christ at that point of need. If you just sleeping God's word, not just preaching, but through the provision of your service, I mean, of, of service, through your care, through your attitude, you can affect and influence these people positively. So I'm going to list a few ways in which healthcare workers can exemplify the best of their Christian faith. Number one, caring for those that are in need. The everyday act of caring for the suffering allows healthcare workers to live out their faith at the various duty posts in the healthcare facility. 
and there are various duty posts. There is none that is more important than the other. Whatever it is that you do at the reception, at the point of collecting card or registration, could make or mar, you know, whatever that, whatever the service that patient is going to get, or whatever impression that patient will have from that facility. And so what we do at our points of service is very critical. And there is none that is least important from reception to registration to the, to the clinics, to the pharmacy, to the laboratories, to the wards, to the theater, to the physiotherapies, et cetera, et cetera. So we are all called upon to look after the weak in their time of need. You know, nobody comes to the hospital because you know, he just wants to take a walk or is coming there for a picnic. People come to the health facility because they have a need. And anybody that has a need, depending on our background, the way and manner we react differs. And so the way healthcare professionals attend to these people and the way we react to their requests matters a lot. And so we are called upon to look after the weak in their times of need. This is very paramount, very paramount as it is ref uh, ref uh, reflected in the following uh, Bible passages. We remember in Matthew 25, 36, Christ said, I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. And of course, you know the response. Say, when, 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 when did I see you naked? When did I see you sick? When did I uh, uh, visited you when you were in prison? Of course, as we said earlier, you say, whatever you do for the least of my brothers, that you do unto me. The people that come to you to seek health care represents, you know, who you can attend to for the sake of Christ. In Galatians 2, 6, the Bible says, bear with one another's, bear one another's burdens and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. Bear one another's burden. You know, anybody can be affected by disease. Health workers are not exempted. You know, and so this need we are talking about, we as health workers are not exempted. And so we should try as much as possible to bear another's burden. The book of James 1.27 said, pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father is to visit orphans and widows in distress and to keep oneself unstained with the world. You know, we walk with people who may not know Christ. We walk with people of the various faiths. What distinguishes us, what identifies us, is the way and manner we render our service, is the way and manner we approach the people that come to us with needs. If we begin to behave like others, then there is no difference. Of course, we know how the disciples of old were first called Christians because they were Christ-like. And that is what we are called to do. The other thing we can do as health workers is offering emotional support, offering valuable sense of comfort to patients who feel nervous, 
who feel anxious, who feel frightened. You know, people come with various complaints and they have little or no understanding of what they are passing through. And so a caring word can calm down their nerves. A caring word can change the whole situation. A caring word can be able to say, look, after all, it is not as bad as I thought. Caring words can make all the difference for patients who feel as if they have lost all hope. The value of emotional support is referenced you know, on several occasions in the book of Proverbs. And one of them is Proverbs 16, 24, that says, pleasant words are as honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Emotional care, when combined with physical care, can prove truly trans uh, transformative. There are people who may not even need drugs. As a neurologist, I've had to sit for between 30 minutes to one hour to consult with patients. And at the end of the day, you know, especially those that have psychosomatic illness, they say, look, I feel relieved. And some of them will come back as some people who have not slept for months who come and tell you that last night I was able to sleep. I was able to carry out my activities. Those who feel so exhausted, deprived, you know, uh, 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 physically, emotionally, that inner sense of recovery comes back as a result of one word of comfort as a result of making them believe that, look, they are not just a disease, they are, they are human beings. And then you are taking time to talk with them. You are taking time to discuss with them. You are taking time to understand their problem. Not just looking away, uh -huh, what is your problem? And before they know it, prescription has gone out. Or, you know, somebody might be struggling, I mean, maybe a queue, People are on queue, they are standing. They don't even have opportunity of where to sit down and you are shouting on them. So as much as possible, you know, we as health workers, we should be able to offer emotional support. And when it is combined with all the other things we do, it will have a great, 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 great effect. And so most people who visit hospitals, when they have time to think of their experience while they were in the healthcare facility, they remember not only the physical suffering they, uh, they, they endured, but also how much, I mean, uh, uh, better they felt both emotionally and spiritually after meeting with the healthcare worker. They will tell you, thank God for that nurse. Thank God for that pharmacist. Thank God for that laboratory scientist. Thank God for that doctor. You know, just a little care out of your way, out of your way will go a long way to be able to uh, improve and affect others. A few minutes of genuine care can completely change the patient's emotional outlook. Just a few minutes of genuine care can do the magic. And then we'll look at lastly, the power of sacrifice. The power of sacrifice. Nobody can pay you or nobody can compensate you fully as a healthcare provider. Nobody can pay for life. There's no amount of money that they will pay you, you know, that can be equated with the service that you provide. And we should know that we are care providers. We do not heal. So what we should do is that 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 is responsible of us, that is expected of us to provide care, let us make sacrifice to provide. 
life has been paid for by Christ. All we need to do is to be able to care as much as possible. Healthcare workers spend long hours and sometimes in very difficult and draining conditions. Very difficult and draining conditions. And all this is because you are passionate about the work and determined to provide a high level of care to your patients, thereby fulfilling the law of Christ. Our service should go beyond the normal. The normal is you, res you resume work at eight o'clock and close by four for those who are on day to day uh, uh, work schedule. For those who are on shift, six to eight hour shift. But sometimes there might be a demand on you to make sacrifice. For some people, when the person who is supposed to take over from them, you know, is not available, all they do is as far, I mean, as, as soon as their time is up, they close up every activity, not even administering the, the next medication, not even carrying out the next uh, uh, function. And so sacrifice, is all part of what we should, you know, aim at as healthcare providers. And these are all, you know, that the patients and other people that come to your, our health service uh, center look out for. Even if we provide all the inputs, if all the inputs are made available and healthcare providers do not have the right attitude, we have not started. All the imputes cannot operate themselves. All the imputes cannot, you know, do what the healthcare provider does. All the high tech machines of this world cannot do what you are trained to do. And so you are the most important input in the healthcare delivery uh, system. As healthcare workers, it is a calling. It is a platform that God has graciously given to us. It is a privilege to be a healthcare worker because you are meeting people who are the point that they are vulnerable. And at that point, they can easily take decision, you know, make the rightful decision for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is my belief that we are all positioned, not just to earn a living for ourselves, but to be able to do the master's business where he has placed us in our various locations. I want to thank the organizers for inviting me and will be available for uh, you know, the interactions that follow. Thank you very much and God bless you.